Welcome to the 30 Minute Hour. It's the weekly podcast where we discuss business, sports, politics, and whatever's on our mind. I'm your host, Eric Twiggs, your procrastination prevention partner. Joining me as always is my right hand man, my partner in crime, Ted Fells. Greetings, all. All right, all right. Yeah. Hey. As you can see, we've got another distinguished guest, and we'll introduce her shortly. But once again, Ted, wanted to talk about the What Now movement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just getting more motivational. We had motiv uh, Motivational Monday today. Right. Don Bornheimer, she bought it, did her video. Definitely mm -hmm. want to go in and check it out when you get a chance. But Ted, th this is a bonus. OK. Give him a bonus. Now, yeah, we had a bonus. So, so not only was it Motivational Monday, uh -huh. but we added an extra M. M and M. Yeah, right. We added another M. Not only was it Motivational Monday, yeah, but it was Marketing Monday. Man, Motivation and Marketing Monday. Right. Like, like, where else can you go to get the extra M like that? No. I don't know any other place you can go get that. Right. So people need to visit the What Now Movement Facebook group. Yeah. Again, today, it's Motivational Monday. You can, uh, in addition to Marketing Monday, you can put your the name of your business, your website link, your book link. If you have a lemonade stand, you can put the picture of your lemonade stand so we know all the way to go to get your lemonade. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we we yeah, got all so your much. pictures covered. You just can't put a picture of your dog there or anything like that, though. It's got to be something. <laughs> picture your little nephew. No, this is not the place for that. But unless your little nephew got a business, you got a business <laughs> or a book, then you can put him out. Then we're interested. Right. Ted, I'm glad you brought that up because somebody was about to put a picture of their nephew. So I'm oh, you know. Glad it. you clarify oh, that. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, probably, as you can tell, you, you can see that this is not your everyday podcast. We, we do things a little different here on the 30-minute hour. And, and you can actually go to our website. It's the 30minutehour.net. And you can see our YouTube videos. You can, uh, see, you can see where we've got the archive of all the audio recordings from the previous episodes. Mm. You can check yourself out, check, check us out, and and get caught up. It's my favorite. It's it's my it's my favorite podcast. I thought I'd share that. Mine too. Mine too. We could be a bit biased, but a little biased. Now, now there's this real hot podcast. It's called How I, How I Got Over. That, that's, uh, that's hot too now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna tell you a little more about that in a okay. little bit. Okay. I don't, don't want to get too too far ahead of myself. You know. Okay. I'm getting excited. Okay. All right. right. Right, right. Okay. okay. That's hot too now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But but this is not your not your everyday podcast, like I was saying. And as you know, we've got our sponsor of the week. Yep, I know that's again, we always get the question, how can I be the sponsor of the week? Mm. This week we, we've got it's vision and purpose magazine is our sponsor of the week. Wow. Yeah, it was, they were founded by Dr. Sharon H. Porter and Karen McConnell Jones, mm. a lifestyle magazine. And they've got a special coming up on the next episodes where they're featuring entrepreneurs and authors. Mm. So you can actually uh, go to DMP Magazine, look up the website, and contact is a contact page. Go right there and inquire about being featured. You can also email, you can email me, eric at ericmtwigs.com if you wanna be featured. Um, and then you wanna know about becoming a sponsor uh, for the 30 Minute Hour podcast. So get eric at ericmtwigs.com is an email that will work for that, but they are our sponsor for the week. That is great, man. It's just so many opportunities for you to get your stuff out there, man. If you're not getting it out there, it's on you. Absolutely. Mm. Yep. There's all kinds of opportunity. The, the key is, are you seizing it? That's the key. That's it. All right. 
to Ted. Yes, Eric. I got something that's on my mind. Please share it. That's right. So today, Ted, I, I want to talk to you about how to profit from your loss. Mm. How to profit from your loss. And this, wow. this ties into our guest and kind of what she does. I want to talk about this. So there's a story that's told of this single father, right? He had two young sons. The father was laid off from his job and he's struggling to make ends meet. So after several months of unemployment, he gets desperate and he robs this local convenience store. The father was arrested. He gets sentenced to 20 years in prison. Mm. The two boys, they're separated from each other and they're placed in the foster care system. 15 years later, a news anchor, she got wind of this story and decided to check in to see how the boys were doing. So the youngest son had become a drug addict and he was always in trouble. He was in and out of the penal system. But the older son had become this successful entrepreneur and a community activist. Mm. So the reporter, she met with the boys separately and asked them the same question. Why do you believe you turned out the way you did? Mm. And here's what's interesting, Ted. They both had the same reply. Here's what they both said. They didn't talk to each other. They were interviewed separately. What else would you expect with a father like that? Mm. They both had the same reply. So the older son, he he's a classic example of how to profit from a loss. Here's the key. Again, this is the part where you have to pull over to the side of the road, get off the treadmill, put the turkey sandwich off to the side for a minute. That's it, That's it. For, for a minute. Right, because here's how you can profit from a loss. You have to embrace the right perspective. Mm. That's right. You have to embrace the right perspective. See, I found, you know, we talk about pivoting all the time, Ted, with the what now move and everything else. So it's easier to pivot when you have the right perspective. Oh, yeah. Right. So remember we had this psychotherapist on, her name was Andrea Lopes, and she, she, de she defined grief as a loss that you didn't want. Mm. Any type of loss that you didn't want. That's how she defines grief. And so we're in this pandemic, this pandemic place, and it's caused people to feel grief, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just for losing a loved one, uh, but they maybe they lost a job. They, they lost a source of income. They lost a way to make money. So, so a lot of people are experiencing grief. But the key is embracing the right perspective can allow you to pivot and experience profit, right? Okay. Ted, you and I both know people that experience that same grief and yeah. they're doing better than they ever have before. Yeah. Right? Because they've embraced the right perspective. And this really ties into our guest. You know, she, she's had to embrace the right perspective in her own life from things she's experienced. You know, people can experience the same thing, but when you have a different perspective, that's how you can pivot and prosper. Mm. So, yeah, but right now, our guest, she helps others to embrace the right perspective based mm. off of her ability to pivot. So let, let's go ahead and bring her on, Ted. This let's see what she's talking about. Let's see what she's talking about. Right. This, this would be the perfect time for yeah. us to go ahead and bring her on. All right. So she is a counselor, speaker, consultant, community servant, and educator. She's the principal consultant of the PL Scott Group. She delivers services in the areas of counseling, workforce development, and more. As a licensed professional counselor, she focuses on providing comprehensive counseling services to the clients she serves. She offers training and professional development opportunities to include entrepreneurship. She speaks on many platforms discussing 
issues in the community such as mental health, education, and more. She's the visionary author of How I Got Over, mm. the educational pursuit of black female scholars. By the way, I, I just love that title. <laughs> we haven't talked to her about that. I got, I got over. Yeah. Yep. She's inspiring and empowering women and others to pursue their passion and operate in their purpose. She's a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Right. Home and love. That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, and, and she's the host of a podcast, Ted. You'll never guess what the name of the podcast is. You'll never get this. Okay, I'll let you know. How I Got Over is the name of What's your boy? That's how she's doing it. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> it's the How I Got Over podcast. All right. Which pro provides a platform for guests to speak on topics that impact the community. She's fondly referred to as Dr. P. So please join me in welcoming to the 30 Minute Hour podcast, Dr. Pia Scott. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me and, and inviting me here to speak about how I got over. All right. Absolutely. It, it's certainly it's an honor and a privilege to have you on the show. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about this kind of what we talked about in the opening as far as embracing the right perspective and dealing with loss. Because Dr. Scott, like I, I'm always amazed that, that two people can experience a similar or the same grief, but they, they take it totally different. Mm. You know, like, like I see people who they lose their job. Like one person goes on to start a company and becomes like successful. The other person just goes into that spiral and mm. they had the same event. From your experience, can you touch on that, that whole thing about perspective and what you see? Um, well, my perspective and take on it as a counselor, um, people just process things differently. Um, so what affects one person in one way could affect someone completely different. Um, and that's why you see a lot of children who are in the same households. Um, they could come from a two parent household and you have one child who strays and the other child is like, you know, I'm going to go in that right direction. So, um, and some of that is family dynamic as well, too. So that child may be rebellious because their parents are often comparing those children to each other. And so that's how they respond um, to that particular um, um, thing that's going on between the family dynamic. Um, so a lot of it is internalized as well, too. Uh, you know, how do we process grief? And some people are able to handle that better than others. Um, so we see a lot of that in, in mental health and counseling and how people are affected by it. Hmm. So, so I think, you know, when we say that embracing that different perspective, I, I think sometimes it takes having someone like you to help them, right? Because, right. It, you know, it, it's one of those, it's easy to say that, oh yeah, this is how you should be perceiving this. But sometimes you're going through something that's so heavy, you need, you need a Dr. Scott in your life, right? Right. Right. And, and in counseling, we help individuals understand how to process certain things. Um, so, for example, a lot of people during COVID are experiencing anxiety. Um, and some of it is, is not because they lost a job, but some of that anxiety is because they're home all day or they may be um, in a situation where they've lost their job and their spouses, um, you know, uh, constantly badgering them about, you know, bills and different things like that. So it's how do you process? And sometimes we do um, family counseling as well, which is important. We look at the family dynamic and help the family actually process what is taking place and help them understand how to have a better, healthy relationship. Excellent. Excellent. So, so let, let's take a, a few steps back. So talk about what, what are some of the life experiences that you went through that inspired you to become a counselor and to be doing what you're doing now? Well, I always loved to help people from a very young age and experiencing loss myself. I dealt with a lot of loss from the age of 11 uh, when I lost my father due to cancer. Uh, when I turned 28, I lost my brother at the age of 24 to cancer. Uh, at the same time, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer at that time that my brother um, was being treated for his cancer. 
So I was dealing with a lot of loss and grief. Um, I lost uh, a relationship. I was engaged and that didn't work out. And so all of those things happened to me um, pretty much at, at one time. Uh, and so I, it, it became very difficult for me, uh, you know, at a time where I just felt all this weight. I felt the world, like the world was crashing in on me and I could not, the only thing that kept me, kept me sane, um, I can remember one day I was sitting at work and at this time I lived in Pennsylvania and I can remember sitting at my computer and my mother had just told me the night before that she had, uh, was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I, all of a sudden I was working on something and then my mind went completely blank. And I felt this weird feeling like I couldn't, I was about to lose control. And so I, I had this talk to myself and in my head, I had this self-talk and I said, if you lose it right now, how are you going to take care of your mother and your brother? And so from that moment, I snapped out of it. And I told my supervisor at the time, who was very supportive, I have to leave now. If I don't leave now, I, I could lose it and I can't afford to do that. Uh, so, you know, I had very good support, not only in my community, but also uh, within my, my career and my job. So I was able to, you know, um, kind of come down from that. And ultimately I did move back home and take care of, of my brother and my mom, you know, at the time. Uh, and I lost my brother five years ago March 31st, 2015, he was 24 years old, um, was six since the age of uh, 15, and he was also adopted. So at that time, we were trying to find his adopted, um, his biological mother, and, and we had to go through some legal issues with that as well, with records being sealed and these different things. So, you know, there was a lot of loss, a lot of trauma, watching someone you love, you know, just wither away. Um, and so dealing with all of that, I said, okay, I need to go to counseling. And I went to counseling as a child um, after my father passed, but I needed to unpack all of the things that were happening to me. Um, and, and, some, and oftentimes counselors need counselors as well too, right? We're, we're only human, um, but you know, we have to unpack so that we can continue to help other people as well. Um, so that therapy process really helped me unpack. And I just had that moment where I just, you know, was able to breathe. So um, yeah, it, it can be, it can be a lot. Hmm. So, and definitely sorry for your losses and um, other tragic uh, situations. Knowing what you know now, if you could go back in time kind of the knowledge you have and give advice to yourself when you were just really facing all of this difficulty all at the same time, like what advice would you give yourself based off of what you know now? I would have told myself to get more rest. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think sometimes we neglect, well, not sometimes, but a lot of times we neglect self care, taking care of self first, because we're so busy taking care of everyone else or, you know, busy with work or, or things. And how can we pour into or give our all into things that we need to if we're not well? Um, so, you know, it, it's, I wish I had taken more time for self care, um, to be more um, at peace, and to be uh, better able to handle the situations and the things that were happening to me because I've never, I have never experienced that level of almost coming to a, a mental breaking point. Mm -hmm. um, and it was scary because I couldn't control it. And that's one of the things, you know, we can't control um, that part when you get to a point where you're about to really just explode and sometimes it it affects our health as well too so we have to remember the self-care piece so let me ask you this dr scott so i you know i appreciate you sharing that um but you know when you said you had to get rest you had to take care of your yourself right like some of that it just seems so easy to say that right but it's like 
you're dealing with so many things moving at the time and you're feeling certain things and uncertainty and we probably couldn't sleep, right? You know, you probably had, you know, you may have done a lot of work in order to some people I see when they're going through things, it seems like they try to work themselves out of it because that takes them away from focusing on whatever it is they're dealing with. I mean, if you can share just some, some tips on how to kind of navigate, how to manage through those situations like that, I'm sure that can help some of our, uh, our listeners. Yeah. So I know one of the things for me and, and like you said, some people often try to find other things to consume their, their thoughts. Um, and for me, that was education at the time. I was in my doctoral program at the time um, when I was going through all of this. Um, but then I found other ways. So I had support groups. Um, and these were women that I could talk to, um, that I had an outlet. It's also about taking care of your physical um, your physical being. So even with the rest and the sleep, um, I would go for walks. I would listen to music, meditation. There's just different ways and different things to de-stress. Um, and even when your mind, it, it's, again, it's that anxiety because your mind is all over the place. And so how do you deal with that? How do you handle that? There are just different ways, eating better, diet, um, exercise because exercise gives you that boost of energy but it also makes you um it gives you the opportunity to have a, a better sleep um also with um lavender and you know just natural things that can really help you um as well and and that's some of the things that i use in in therapy that really help my clients um also journaling is really um a big thing that I use or a tool or resource that I use in counseling because now you're able to get those things that are in your head down on paper and it's kind of taking that pressure off of you. It's that relief. Thank you. Great. And so you hit on something I want to touch on. You had mentioned that, you know, even a counselor needs a counselor. And, and when you said that, I just think about how this, it seems like there's this still this stigma around getting therapy or getting counseling. How do we get past that? So uh, that's one of the things um, that I really work in the community on is how do you get past stigma? What does that look like? And especially for, you know, the African-American community because of um, our history with um, medicine and, and medical procedures, um, a lot of people are reluctant to, you know, go to therapy or go to counseling. But what I've seen in, in my uh, practice is that a lot of a lot more African Americans and a lot more people in general are seeking counseling services. Mm. So that is one of the good things. Um, and I like the fact that a lot of celebrities now are really starting to talk about the mental health and how it impacts them. Um, I recently read that um, Michelle, Michelle Obama just talked about depression. Um, and Taraji P. Henson has a foundation, um, the Henson Foundation where she provides counseling to the community as well. And so I think the more educated people are to really understand what it is and what it looks like and that there are, they're not alone and that there are counselors that look like them, um, people who are willing to not be judgmental, but to help them kind of process and work through. I think people become more comfortable in, in acknowledging. That's the first step is to acknowledge that, you know, there is something going on and then seeking the help. So, so how do, how would one know that they should consider counseling, right? So I, you know, I was dealing with a bunch of things from a business perspective and just life stuff, right? And so one of my friends that's in the counseling space, he's just like, "You need a therapist." <laughs> I'm like, "Man, you're just saying that. Man. You're just saying that because that's what you do, right? Like if you were a trainer, you'd say, "You need a trainer. You need to work out." Right. So, right. so how, right. how does one know? Because I didn't feel like I was like out of control. I just knew it was a lot going on, a lot of moving pieces at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and I just, I felt I was managing it, you know, but you know, he said, you know, you need a therapist. So, yeah. So uh, with that, sometimes people just know 
Um, and, and I have clients a lot of times tell me that uh, they just feel overwhelmed. And sometimes it's not necessarily um, addressing mental health per se, because it can look, you know, uh, various, it varies for different people. So sometimes it's just people unpacking all of the stuff that's going on in their daily lives, where, like I said, they don't take time for self care. And sometimes it's just as simple as that. Uh, now, some severe cases where you have, you know, other individuals who are dealing with multiple things, um, which we call like dual di diagnosis and um, where they're dealing with multiple things at one time, um, that's a little more intensive. And so there is a lot more work that has to be done. But most times it's just people, like I said, general depression, anxiety, um, uh, uh, especially during COVID. Uh, and we've seen a lot more people accessing online services as well and being more comfortable because now you don't have to go out you know somewhere so now we can reach more people um and, and so that understanding of yourself and because people know and and sometimes it go it's so bad to where it starts affecting people physically and that's when they say okay I've got to do something because I feel like I'm out of control. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it, most times it's just, they have a lot going on and they don't know how to unpack it. So what about as far as COVID? I mean, you started to touch on, I think with this pandemic, you have people that are feeling grief for various reasons. It could be they lost a job, uh, business is dried up. Could be someone they love is now sick or maybe even passed away. What is, what's some advice you have for that person that's watching us now that may be dealing with pandemic related grief? What advice do you have? So there are, are options. Um, and one of the things, like I said, is going back to the virtual counseling online. Um, mm -hmm. That is a, a very good way to unpack the things that are, are going on. Um, journaling, once again, is something that um, I encourage my clients to do just to, you know, write down and visually see okay what am i what am i holding on to what am i dealing with what what am i grieving about um and then just also once again the self-care part i think is just so important because just something as simple as going outside um walking 30 minutes a day doing something uh, and, and for some people, if they still want to travel, I know some people still do. Um, so instead of flying, they may drive to the beach for a weekend or something or a day um, or, sp you know, spend the day at, a, at the beach or some other place that's not home. Um, just getting that basic feeling of relaxation uh, it is really um, a way that people have been dealing with COVID and, and some of my clients have been doing very well. We started, you know, they started out um, very depressed, very anxious. And so as we continue to do the work and they realized what they were feeling and why they were feeling that way. And then we did some of the work to address that. And now I've seen significant improvement um, in that and just being able to process what is it and why is it that you're feeling that way? And here are some tools that you can use to help you. Excellent, excellent. Now, I mean, you laid out some very specific things that people can do, and I, I'm ho hoping that our followers or took good notes on that uh, that section. So we're here. We're, we're talking with Doctor P. Doctor P. Is Scott here on the Three Minute Hour podcast? I think more and more people are logging on. Feel free to uh, type in the comments section. You want to say hello. You want to compliment Ted's background? <laughs> if you want to ask Dr. P a question, uh, please uh, do that as well. Uh, we want to make this an engaging, uh, interactive experience here. So, so Dr. P, what ins what inspired you to start the P. L. Scott Group? Well, uh, I will say first and foremost, uh, Dr. Sharon. Uh, inspired me to to create that mm. um, and just the point of all of the things that I do I wanted to have one space where people could really see um, who I am and what I what I do 
Uh, and so I am an educator. Um, I teach uh, first year experience courses for college students who are first generation um, or maybe returning uh, from returning to school um, after time off who are looking to uh, getting another career or, you know, just brush up on some of the skills that um, they're seeking to, to, um, to gain. Uh, a community servant, a member of Delta Sigma Theta, uh, Sorority Incorporated, and doing the community service part. So addressing the human trafficking, the mental health, um, the different things that impact us every day. Um, it, it's just near and dear to my heart. And it's something that, you know, once again, I'm here to help. Um, and if I can serve in that capacity, then uh, that's what I, I, I love to do. Uh, the counselor part of me, as we talked about, uh, once again, is a helping profession. And that helps people just understand that they're not alone, uh, that there are process, they can process, they can overcome. Uh, and, and there's just different ways that people grieve. And it's okay. Uh, it's, there's different ways that people handle loss and the different things that are going on in their life. Uh, and an author as well, um, with the book, How I Got Over the Educational Pursuit of Black Female Scholars um, as well. So um, I, I created this to show the, the vastness of what one person can do with the help of others, because I can't do it alone. So I do have, you know, other people that, that help push the visions that I have uh, so that's why this was created and birthed. Excellent. And do you would you say that you've got like an ideal client or target demographic? Well, how would you describe like your ideal client? Uh, so typically, I work with adults eighteen uh, to sixty five or or sixty plus, um, but mostly uh, I have about maybe I work with. Uh, children as well too, um, teenagers mostly, uh, and and they are just amazing, uh, amazing group to work with because they they too are dealing with a lot. Mm. Um, and if you don't have that, you don't establish that trust from the beginning. It's very hard to get these teenagers and some adults to feel comfortable enough to talk about what is going on with them, you know, that there really is an issue. It's hard enough, you know, trying to go to counseling and having someone, you know, kind of make you feel uh, invisible or rejected. So it's important to establish that trust um, at, from the very beginning. Um, and so I, I really, um, there isn't anybody that I wouldn't work with, uh, but mostly I have 18 to about 65. Um, I also work with the teenagers, once again. Um, veterans, I work with veterans. I work with women who are, women and men who um, are victims of human trafficking, domestic violence. Um, I work with, you know, single mothers, single fathers, couples. Um, it, it just, I work with a gamut of, of people. So. Oh. I have a question. You, you talked about, you know, working with the teens, right? And, you know, and I know I have friends now that have, uh, uh, have children that were, you know, that had uh, just graduated from high school during the pandemic and they missed their ability to have proms and to march. And then now they're going, they're being, you know, dropped off to college, some of them, and it's a totally different experience that most of us had on a freshman year like what what could you share about how you know those team those uh, young people can deal with this or how their parents can help them in dealing with these types of situations because yeah I just couldn't imagine that situation right um, one of the things that I have seen is a lot of students have actually banded together and rallied together a lot of the parents as well too um, just because of and I couldn't even imagine not being able to go to my prom or celebrating graduation some of the most important you know times in students lives in young adults lives um, where it's there it sort of feels like they may have been robbed of that. Um, 
you know, of those opportunities. But this is also a time to create opportunity. Um, and I think like, you know, Eric mentioned before that ability to pivot, that ability to be inspired uh, in, in young people are, are really getting it and they're understanding, okay, if there is no place or, you know, we create, we can be creative and create our own um, vision and our own journeys and, and whatever it is that we want to do. And I think once again, it's not what happens to us, but what do we do in those times where we can't control things? Um, and, and that's another thing within counseling that is so, uh, where a lot of people get the anxiety and depression because we, how do you handle things you can't control? You know, um, so I encourage my clients, my teenagers, especially create, this is a time to be creative. What does it look like for you? I often ask them, what do, what does, um, you know, when you go off to college, your career, what does that look like to you? So let's focus on what you can control, you mm -hmm. know? So it, it's, it's that level of, of creativity and being able to pivot and, and just being grateful that you're alive to mm. see, you know, another day and that COVID has not in, affected you to the point where you're in the hospital or you are. So, so I try to get clients to see the positive and the negative thing. Yeah, it goes back to that perspective. You, you help them to embrace the right perspective. But I think, I, again, I, it's, it's easier said than done, right? Right, right, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I, when you look out, all you see is negativity and disappointment. It's it's hard to really see that brighter side. But that's why I mean we're grateful for what you're doing. I mean, it's, right. it's, it's Ted. I think Ted asked a great question about the kids. Oh yeah, right? yeah. That's a real issue. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really great though that she mentioned that some of the students are are kind of you know working together, you know, getting together and kind of going through it together because I think it's on. It's like a special kind of bond that they have, right? Of being that class of 2020 and what they've gone through, and yep. you know, and they're trying to, like you said, put a you know a positive spin on it that you know that they that they are resilient, right? That they came out and took on the situation that many you know would not have been able to to handle and feel. I think it's going to make them uh, stronger in the long run. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and so, Dr. P. You're the host of the How I Got Over podcast. So for, let's let's just start with the name. <laughs> how, how'd you come up with the name How I Got Over? Ooh, well, uh, so it the How I Got Over stems from the book um, How I Got Over: The Education of Pursuit of Black Female Scholars because mm -hmm. we talk a lot about how we got over. Um, as Black women, being in higher education, being in work, juggling family, juggling discrimination, sexism, all of these isms, isms um, and coming into a place where we created our own spaces and our own opportunities. And, you know, I just came in contact with so many women who look like me or who are just experiencing some of the same things mm -hmm. and I just said what what in the world is really going on because how are all these women in different in different places all over the states and even internationally there are women that I've come into contact even internationally you know um even women who are are darker skin have we're dealing with some real issues um, mm -hmm. you know, and we're having to deal with a lot of, um, just some of the things just don't even make any sense, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so in the book, we talk about how we got over those things and how we overcame. And so I said, well, what better way to have the podcast, you know, called how I got over because in that podcast, we share when we have our guests on, they talk about their, how I got over moments. Um, that relate to whatever topic we are discussing. Um, so uh, that is actually coming out uh, next month. Uh, and so 
one of our first guests uh, was formerly incarcerated and now is the secretary for the Department of Probation and Parole and Pardon Services in uh, Pennsylvania and talked about how to get a pardon. So not only is it something that um, we talk about how we get over, but we also talk about what are some solutions because we talk about you know the problems and the issues, but how do we solve those things? Mm. What what are some are there are there any common how I got over moments or any common struggles that you're seeing? Yes, promotions um, in in it's all over. And what I did in the book, so all of the women um, were either pursuing their doctorates or. Um, were already, had already completed. Um, so we all have uh, doctorates, PhDs, MDs. I, I did it where by I show that we're in every diaspora of um, different fields. So some people are in the medical field, some people are in social work, some people are in education, some people are in counseling, some people are even in finance uh, within the book. And so I show a dynamic array of women that are in different areas who have experienced the same thing, not only in their careers, but also in their programs. In the program, you know, I had a professor pretty much turn his back to me while he's teaching to the rest of the class. And when I'm asking a question, you know, it, it's as if I don't exist, you know, that I'm not supposed to be here. And so people, it's, it's never happened to you, it's easy to dismiss. And so, uh, I talking to other women at these different conferences and I would just go to different conferences and that conversation comes up, you know, well, I've been trying to do this, but I can't do this. And because I've been blackballed basically. Um, and I read this article uh, that was very interesting to me. It's, uh, and I forgot who the author is, but she said uh, the title I think is like from pet to threat. So when you come in, you're the pet, you're the one who does all the work. And then once you learn the job and you get good at the job, then you become the threat now because mm. you do the job and you do it well. And so mm. now you're looked at as being, oh, I'm going to take your job. Mm. And that's not even the case. I don't want your job. I want to learn my job so I can move on into something different or whatever I want for myself. And so you then become just overwhelmed with all of these different things that sometimes doesn't even have to do anything with you. Uh, you know, I've been told, um, oh, well, you look like a doctor today. Okay, so I didn't know that a doctor was a look, I thought it was a title. Right. You know, so it's, it's little things like that. And because I'm, I'm young, you know, I get that, you know, Oh, I, I recently went for I'm an interview last year and the woman, I, she just looked at my resume and was like, oh, I can't believe you've done all this. And how old are you? And, you know, all of this stuff. And when I finally get to the interview, she's just staring at me. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know, it, it's kind of like, OK, I don't want to work here because yes. if I'm already getting that now, I can imagine what will happen if I accept that job? So needless to say, I didn't get the job, but I, it was fine. You know, on to the next. I, I move on. Um, so yeah. You know, it's interesting. So like I noticed just that there's a lot, there are minority females that are in these leadership positions now mm -hmm. and they're all excelling. I mean, they're making it happen. I mean, if you're talking Kamala Harris, Keisha yeah. Lance Bottoms, the mayor of Chicago, Muriel Bowser, it's yeah. like they, they all bring this strength to the table. Yes. You know, it, it, you know my yeah. Dr. Scott agrees. He, he agrees with that. <laughs> but yes. Certainly. I mean, but my from what I see, it seems like when you get on the other it's probably because you have to get on the other side of all of that. Yeah. Right. And I think that just strengthens you. Mm -hmm. And I, I just like 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 Kamala Harris, if she has to go against whoever in a debate, I I'm like, okay, I, I would, <laughs> I'd put my money on Kamala. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, talk, talk, can you speak to that? I mean, because I think it does reduce that level of strength when you, when you have to battle a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to have a very, well, first off, you have to know your stuff and know what you're talking about, because I've seen people not know 
half, you know, but don't get questioned. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't, uh, you know, it's, oh, okay, I'll just take your word at it. And it's not even the correct information or nothing is correct. And so, um, you know, like my grandmother said, you always have to be twice, three times, four times is better. But to know your stuff, to always respect yourself. Um, And when you know your stuff, people see that. So it's not something that you have to force. Um, It's not something that, you know, people would just, and it's almost difficult because even with the respect part, you're just not respected sometimes until you earn it, I guess, in a way, Um, which in some circumstances I understand um, but even with with uh, Sora Bottoms, her leadership just, you know, she took the stance and that's what it was. And it was for the people. And so people respect that because they see, people understand when people are just, you know, BSing or they're true to their, to their word and what they're saying and what they're doing. And so people have more respect um, in that regards. And they may not always agree, but they have respect more respect for um for women who are in leadership and who make the call and who stand in that Hmm. interesting no that's that's awesome and then so the book how i got over you're talking about and and this is a big collaboration project several people came together talk about how how that all came together That was very interesting, but fun at the same time. Um, And I can remember having this conversation with uh, Sharon. Uh, We were doing uh, another um, book signing and I told her my vision and we had some discussions about, you know, what we went through and some women had to start over their whole degree because of just, it was just a mess. and I went to all these different conferences. And like I said, I would hear the same thing. And I said, there's something going on because we can't all be feeling like this. Uh, and so I talked to um, Dr. Sharon about it and, and told her what my vision was. And she was like, let's make it happen. And I don't think she expected me to make it happen that quick. <laughs> but um, she's like, oh okay you know when i told her i was ready and i already had my people together uh, and she's like okay so you're serious yes i am very serious about this because i wanted this book to be an inspiration and an empowerment um you know and not just for women but just we all are dealing with things so that's why the title high got over became so relevant um and then, of course, I had um, one of my colleagues, Dr. Anthony Jurder, uh, say, well, it should have something to do with, you know, Black women, and y'all are scholars, and, you know, and I said, okay, well, let me revent, let me go back and kind of figure this out, and then I came up with, with that um, subtitle, so like okay yeah I like this you know so I ran it by a few people and they're like yeah we definitely like that so that's how I came up with that so so the person who and maybe she's a minority female she's just graduating from college she's got these hopes and dreams she knows she's smart and then she encounters some of the the walls what, what, what is she going to get when she reads it? She picks up your book. What, what is she going to get? What is she going to walk away with? Keep going. And if you have to create your own space, you create your own space. Mm-hmm. And and it's as simple as that. Excellent. Excellent. How I got over. All right. So, so what's next on the horizon? I mean, you're an author, you're a podcast host, you're speaking in, on these different platforms. What's next on the horizon for you? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. So next year, uh, I am launching the How I Got Over conference and Mm -hmm. tour. Um, The first place we're going to be going is Charleston, South Carolina, my hometown. Um, And so I'm in the process of of getting that together. uh, So that will be launching um, next year. And I'm very excited about it. Um, That's just the first stop. Uh, So 
uh, and then the next stop will be Atlanta. So um, we're gearing up for that and I'm excited about it. Also continuing to, you know, do what I love, the counseling, the consulting um, in, in various areas, the community service. Uh, so still moving forward with those things. And of course, the launching of the podcast next month. All right. Fantastic. Fantastic. So how can our followers best connect with you? So they can follow me on IG. Uh, the name is Pia the Doc Scott, P-I-A-T-H-A-D-O-C-S-C-O-T-T. Or they can visit my website at plscottgroup.com. They can also follow me on LinkedIn, Dr. P.L. Scott. They can find me that way. Um, there's Facebook page and the uh, other LinkedIn page, the PL Scott group. So if they just look for that, they can follow me there. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. We are about to go around the horn. And, and this, this is Ted's favorite part of the show. Oh, that's my favorite part of the show. You know, because we always have Ted go after the guests. And he just loves that aspect of the show. He really does. Oh, wow. <laughs> Ted, Ted really does not like this part of the show because I'm right after the guest. The guest has just been killing it throughout the whole the whole podcast, and then I just have to try to say something that's even close to the level of the standard that's been set by the guest. So I'm just looking forward to trying to follow you. All right. So, so Scott, I mean, you, you said a lot of inspiring things. Uh, episode and what, what are your closing thoughts that you want to leave the people with uh so just you know a few thoughts um one of course you know we are not what uh happens to us but how we handle those things uh you are in control even when you think you don't have control mm -hmm. um you know and if you have to seek support everyone needs help um at some point and so don't be afraid to ask um, for help and also remember self care is key um, and that's with anything just putting yourself first and I know that's easier said than done but it sometimes some of that just takes practice so yes mm. and remember that you can get over I'll leave you with that you can get over you can get over mm. you wanted to know how you got over Dr. Scott's got it for you Dr. P got it for you yep Mm. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, Ted, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. So, I mean, this this uh, this episode has just really been good. Just we just talked about just again looking at the glass is half full. I mean, we we talk about that all the time, right? It's all, all in the in your perspective, and just as you've shared with us all the things that you been through and then how you have turned those into just some positive things and, and accomplishments and all of that it's just I think it just really can help you know can help to motivate and inspire anyone that you you come in contact with because one that your energy is, is very infectious and it's just you know you know for us I mean I this has just been really good it's been really good to just really hear this hear your story hear how you continue to you know build upon you know your accomplishments, and it sound like there's so much more that's uh, that's uh, that's on the horizon. So, you know, I'm I'm motivated. I'm inspired. I'm ready to unpack some stuff. I need you talking about unpacking. I'm ready to unpack some stuff. You know, there's no excuses, right? Right. Yep. Uh, thank you again for sharing. Gotta gotta unpack that stuff. I gotta unpack it. Don't be just carrying that. Don't be just carrying that stuff around, Eric. You need to unpack it. All right, that's, that's why I've been going along. I've, I've been burdened by carrying it all around. I gotta let it go. I gotta unpack. That's it. That's it. I need a Dr. P in my life to help me to that's unpack and give me a different perspective. Yeah. Different oh, Dr. P says she. Dr. P says she here for you. <laughs> she 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 here for you. Now you you get you get some free right here. But Dr. P says you you go and engage. She she really help you unpack it, won't you, Dr. P? I sure will. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> now that that that's excellent. So as I'm thinking about my closing thought, something that comes to mind, like for entrepreneurs, I think sometimes your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. 
right? Mm. Because you're you come up to th- okay, you got to be self sufficient, you got to be strong, and, and you're like, I got this. And someone says, Hey, how's it going? I'm good. Everything's great. Yeah. I'm good. And I find it with myself. Like yeah. you can ask me, I'm going. I'm always going to tell you, I'm good. Yeah. I might not be good. Yeah. You know, but we 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 think you know I got this, so it makes us less likely to reach out for help. Mm-hmm. Right, we, and it's easy to get fall into this false thinking that needing help means that you're weak. Mm. Right. And that's not the case at all. I, I think it's a sign of strength. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and understanding that, you know, there's always, sometimes things happen that are just so heavy. You can't process that thing on your own. You, you, it takes somebody that's outside of your current vantage point to help yep. you do it. Absolutely. Yep. So that's, what I, that's my thing. I mean, don't don't allow your greatest strength to be your greatest weakness. You know, just reach out for help and recognize those times. And, and I, I think everybody should have a coach, a mentor, a counselor, or somebody that can tell them, "No, you're you're doing that wrong," or "No, you, have you considered looking at it this way?" I just think it makes a big difference. All right, great, absolutely, for sure. Yeah, and, and I, I'm just grateful for uh, Dr. P. Scott or Dr. P. for enlightening us all. And once again, Dr. P., please leave your information with the people. Let them know how they can connect with you one more time. Yes, so I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook at P.L. Scott Group. Uh, you can also look on my website, plscottgroup.com. And I am also on Instagram, IG at Pia the Doc Scott, P-I-A-T-H-A. D-O-C-S-C-O-T-T. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, T-H-A. The doc. Yeah, the, the I know, Eric, you was one and she meant this mean T-H-E? No, T-H-A. <laughs> the doc. That, see, that, that's what a different level it is. Yeah. You go yeah. Keep, yeah. That's a different level. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you know you're doing something. That's it. That's it. Yeah. She is somebody. She is somebody. Yeah. Yes, I am somebody. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, again, it's been an honor uh, to have you on the show. We wish we wish you continued success on everything you're doing. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to be on the show with you guys, and I had a good time. All right, good, Claire. Excellent. We know that this may not be your your favorite podcast because <laughs> we're sure that you know how I got over podcast is number one, but we'd like to at least be in your top two. I'm gonna be in your top two podcast. Yeah, just, top two. We could be in a close second. I mean, that, that's that's we, we, consider, we consider that a victory. One A. All right. We push it there, right? And, and Dr. P, I'm asking this for a friend. Do, do you ever have male guests? That, that's what Ted wants to know. That's what we want to know. Do you ever yes. have male guests? Yes. Uh, yeah. Actually, our first two podcasts are, are uh, males and we've had three on the second podcast talking about mentorship. So right. yeah. Yeah. Good that's time. why I said it's not, it's not limited. Okay. Yeah. So if we don't, so if we don't get a call, Eric, it's not because it's limited. I knew that was next. <laughs> it just means <laughs> you know, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't make the cut. I, yeah, exactly. I have a, I have a place for you guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> we'll talk about that off after yeah, the we'll show. Talk about that. But I, okay. I just had to ask that for a friend. You know? That's right. There you go. That's All right. right. Well, that is our show for this week. It's not your everyday podcast. You can find our website, the 30 minutehour.net. You can come here to our 30 minute hour Facebook page and see the previous live episodes. Until next time, don't forget to join the What Now Movement group where you can check out all kinds of excellent content. Don't You can still get in on Marketing Monday. Go to the What Now Movement group, post your business. You never know. That might be the big break you've been looking for. And maybe one more time about Vision and Purpose Magazine, Eric. We want to talk about yeah. that. Vision and Purpose Magazine, uh, founded by Dr. Sharon H. Porter and Karen McConnell-Jones. You can be one of the featured entrepreneurs or authors in their magazine. Again, you can email me, Eric, at Eric M. Twiggs for more details. They're our sponsor of the week. You definitely want to check that out.
Until next time, have a great one.